What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we're going to cover the second part of how we're hacking and firmware analysis. In the first part, as you can see, we covered the very basics of analyzing firmware images. We said that firmware images can be extracted from network devices such as routers, switches, uh, from PC devices, from cell phones, radio devices, even from micro SD cards and external hardware. And we also covered the command line tools that can be used to extract relevant data, such as strings, the file command in Linux, binwalk. All of these tools can be used to analyze firmware images that are extracted from Linux operating systems or from uh, Unix-like operating systems. Additionally, we covered the different file formats for firmware images extracted from radio devices and used to analyze radio signals. Okay. Uh, what if we want to analyze firmware images okay, using non-command line tools? Let's say we don't want to use command line tools. Is there any GUI interface or GUI tool that can be used to analyze firmware images? The answer to this question is yes. And today I'm going to introduce bug proof platform that's used to analyze firmware images. Basically, it's very easy to create an account in this platform once you create an account you get a free trial where you get to explore the various features of this platform so once you sign in you will see here uh, the option to upload firmware images and get started so as you can see we can upload firmware images in raw or compressed format you can also upload them in tarballs and at the end you can upload elf file or executable files uh, imported from Linux operating system or Unix like operating systems. So, the best way to start, I recommend you guys to go to projects and create a project. We can get started by creating a sample project by clicking on the plus sign from here and we choose a name for the project. And this is a very nice way of representing the project by choosing an icon. So, here we get to choose the default settings for new scans. Okay. Now, these settings will apply to all subsequent scans that you conduct under this project. Okay, So remember that a scan is an individual uh, scanning of an individual firmware image. A project may contain one scan or multiple scans. So here, when you choose the default settings, be careful to choose the settings that you wish to apply to all subsequent scans because they're going to be implemented and apply to all uh, further scans. So we have three options, auto, manual, and custom. So for those who are just getting started, I recommend to use auto, okay? And then again, create. Once you create, you'll be able to see all of these scans that you have conducted under this project. Okay, so for me, I have created one project named Project V1, and from here, I selected Start Scan. Once I click on this, I can select the firmware image. So you can upload all sorts of firmware images imported from Linux operating systems, embedded devices, micro SD cards, and even binary uh, files that come in ELF formats. Okay, so as you can see guys, I chose, I conducted two scans here. The first one named sample V1. Let's go over the scan. So first we get to see an overview of all of the findings. Now here we can see the name, the architecture, the last modified date, the size of the file, and how many files the firmware image contains, and the hash of this file. On the right we can see the option to keep an eye on this uh, firmware image meaning we keep monitoring the image for new emerging vulnerabilities and we can download the original file if we uh, lost access to it for some reason in the findings here we can see the severity so this indicates the severity level of the vulnerabilities found in the firmware image so bug proof will scan the firmware image for all sorts of vulnerabilities you can verify this by going to findings and you can see all of the vulnerabilities found in the firmware image now what are these vulnerabilities these vulnerabilities represent the vulnerabilities found in the binary in the binaries stored in the binaries and the software installed within the firmware image 
as you can see here we have one vulnerability found in cups so we click on this and we can see the details of the cve along with all of the references to the cve so it's very useful if you want to conduct a security assessment or security testing for a hardware a device you just dump the firmware image and use bugproof to scan for vulnerabilities found in the binaries and the software installed going back here number of vulnerabilities found 92 and we can see the breakdown of the vulnerabilities by severity so we have 58 vulnerabilities ranked as high in ranked as high in severity six as critical and we can see the scripting languages found in the firmware image meaning again the tool will break down the firmware image by analyzing different binaries and software installed so basically we can see the scripting languages used in these binaries and unsafe function calls these calls are found uh, in the source code of each binary installed or found or stored in the firmware image and the hardening metrics if you want to dig for more details we can go to findings and we have covered this we can see all of the uh, vulnerabilities found zero day scans are performed using pris or press if i'm pronouncing this correctly this technique is used to scan for zero day vulnerabilities and memory corruption issues as you can see we have these shared libraries and they were scanned against a set of zero day vulnerabilities but there was nothing found no confirmed findings that's cool we go to weak binaries and we can see all of the binaries scanned and found within the firmware image in addition to the shared libraries as you can see here moreover we can see the function calls unsafe function calls found in the source code for each shared library and each binary so what are these useful for these are useful for code review okay if you are conducting a code review and if you want to do automatic analysis for the binaries found within the firmware image you can use bug proof to do just that and you can also get an audit of unsafe function calls again this is useful for code review and static analysis in addition this is also useful if you want to see how many privilege escalation vectors can be found uh, on weak binaries so by saying weak binaries those are binaries that score low on the binary protection controls for example we can see here the protection controls stripped the relocation read only the position independent executable the nx these are all protections that can be enabled on a specific binary if they are absent okay it means that the binary can be exploited for buffer overflows and some of them can be exploited for the set uid bit it, it depends on the shared library or the binary itself so these are very useful for binary exploitation as well we go to dependencies you can see breakdown of the vulnerabilities for each dependency that's used by the binaries for example we can see the uh for example let's see ip tables it has one dependency that's found to be vulnerable if you click on this we can find the vulnerability and the score is high you can click on the cve and we can find all the details related to the cve itself going to cryptography here cryptography section it will list all of the files that it believes they are encrypted but we have nothing in here to uh, find if you click now on file explorer and you will see the breakdown of the file system as you can see it's root fs and the type of the image is squash fs which is the compressed format of the firmware image uh, of linux file system we click on this and we can see indeed a breakdown of the directory structure of the linux file system we can see the dev bin etc home directory the users the var so on and so forth so we can also explore the files and directories uh, on a case-by-case -case basis from the file explorer and lastly the most important is the report you can create a report or generate a report and download it to your own machine this is the report that you get the report has nice breakdown of the uh, findings and the contents you can see the table of contents and here we can see the overview the methodology used by the tool to scan the firmware image and the other section is the findings from here 
Here, see, here we the chart breakdown of the uh, severity of each vulnerability and the number as well. Dependencies we also cover this. Every dependency, every binary with along with each vulnerability found. Now let's go over the other sample. So first we start with sample V1. Let's now go to sample V3. We click on this and we see different things this time. So here we have different architecture, ARM, and we have 714 files. But things don't look different here in terms of the severity of the vulnerabilities. As you can see, the firmware image rates critical on the severity of the vulnerabilities found. And we have seven critical vulnerabilities. Probably these vulnerabilities are found in the binaries and the shared libraries uh, stored in the firmware image. And we can see one file that uses the Lua programming language. And here on the function call, we covered this before. Let's go to now File Explorer. And it's again, Squash FL File System. It has the same directory structure. Findings. These are the CVEs found in the binaries. Zero day scans. I haven't run zero day scans on this binary because it may take some time, but you can practice this on your own. The weak binaries. Now, the weak binaries here look much better than in the previous sample. Most binaries have some protections like NX, the stripped, but they lack the position independent executable, so they can still be executable through buffer overflow. We can run the press uh, technology to find zero-day vulnerabilities. Now, if you are a developer, you can hit to API keys, and from here you can manage all the created API keys uh, that we can use to interact with the bug-proof public API. Once you create your API keys, you can hit to playground, and you can go over the uh, different methods to interact with bug-proof API by going over the, as you can see guys, the API documentation, the function, and the objective of each section from here. You can also download the Open API to create or generate a request based on the programming language of your choice. Okay guys, that was it. Tell me what you think in the comments, and I'm gonna definitely see you in the next video.